What do this level crossing and this electric skateboard have in common? Well, they both use something that we call fail-safe design, which is what we're going to talk about in today's video. So probably one of the most classic examples of fail-safe design is the, uh, is the braking system on a train or on a bus. So uh, these air brake systems, they actually work the other way around. So uh, when you increase the air pressure, that actually releases the brakes. And when you decrease the air pressure, that actually applies the brakes. And of course, this is really clever because what it means is that if there is a leak somewhere in the system and the air escapes, uh, that will actually apply the brakes and stop the vehicle rather than just letting it run uh, without brakes. So this is an example of fail-safe design, right? It's a design that um, remains safe even when it fails. Fail-safe design appears pretty much everywhere in the world around us. So take a look at these automatic barriers at the level crossing that we talked about in the intro. These barriers are actually actively kept open. So this way, if the power were to fail, these barriers will come down automatically due to gravity, safely closing off the level crossing. Submarines and submersibles often carry weights underneath their hull using electromagnets. So this way, if the power on board the craft fails, the electromagnets will stop working, they drop the weight and the craft will automatically float up to the surface. Emergency stop buttons in industrial automation are always wired up normally closed. So this means when you press the emergency stop button, you actually open a switch and you interrupt a signal. So this way, if the cable that connects the stop button breaks, that also interrupts a signal and therefore it also stops the machine. So a cable can never be broken without anyone noticing it and the machine would keep running without the stop button working properly. And then, of course, there is the electric skateboard that I talked about as well. You see, the throttle lever on this skateboard is connected using three wires. One of them is 5 volts, one of them is ground, and the other one is the signal wire. The voltage that gets applied to the signal wire is proportional to how much throttle you apply. So, when you apply no throttle, this wire is at around 1 volt. When you apply full throttle, it'll be at around 4.5 volts. And this voltage is registered by the controller of the skateboard, and so it powers the motor accordingly. The big problem with this is what happens if the ground wire were to break. So if your ground wire disconnects, that actually applies about 4.5 volts onto the signal wire, regardless of the position of your throttle. And basically what that means is, well, the skateboard takes off at full power, which is not very fail-safe, is it? So, what I've done to prevent this is I've mechanically limited the range of my throttle lever. So now, it'll only go up to about 4 volts. Now that doesn't limit the top speed of the skateboard because I've remapped the controller, so now it interprets 4 volts as 100%. But what this means is I can now detect automatically if there is a wire break, because if the ground wire breaks, it still applies about four and a half volts onto the signal wire and the controller can now go, hang on a minute, that's not possible, right? Four and a half, that's too much, that's out of range. And so it can then safely shut down the motor instead of applying full power and sending me into a ditch. So fail-safe design is an incredibly powerful tool because it separates the safety of something that you make uh, from the quality of the components and the craftsmanship of the person who built it. So let's say we have a train again. You know, it doesn't matter if we used you know, cheap quality hoses that easily have leaks in them, or, you know, an idiot didn't quite hook them up properly. That's not going to put the passengers in danger because the system is fail safe. Or take my electric skateboard. It doesn't matter if I use a very thin, crappy wire that easily breaks because it's going to be annoying if it breaks because the skateboard will no longer work, but it's not going to send me off and crash. Thanks to fail-safe design, we can even have crazy things like um, wireless emergency stop buttons. So that sounds like a terrible idea, right? At first, that's, that seems awful. Using a wireless connection for something super important like an emergency stop. But actually, if you think about it, it can work just fine because 
these stop buttons work by continuously transmitting a signal when they're not being pressed, and when they do get pressed, they simply stop transmitting, disabling the machine. And if the signal gets lost for some other reason, you know, maybe there is interference or the battery in the stop button runs out because, you know, there's batteries in there if it's wireless, um, that would also just stop the machine. So a loss of the signal would never lead to a dangerous situation. So again, an example of how fail-safe design separates the safety from the reliability of the, of the parts that are being used. It doesn't matter if we used a cheap cable or a crappy wireless connection, uh, or maybe a wireless connection over a really long range that doesn't quite work well enough. It doesn't matter, right? It's, it might be annoying because it stops working every now and then, but it's not going to put anyone at risk, and that's the idea. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about, um, about what fail-safe design is and what it allows you to do. Uh, and of course, thank you for watching.